What we're gonna do in this video is take a look at animation mode. It's the other option underneath model and object mode. And if you've never used it before, it can be very helpful. So we'll see how to use it, how it compares to the other modes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so animation mode. Um, one of our three main modes here, as we're working in Cinema 4D, we have model mode, which is for when we're animating. We have object mode, which is actually for animating as well. And then lastly, animation mode. So I wanna kind of talk about these really quick before diving into um, animation mode specifically, but model mode, pretty straightforward. You know, you use your move tool, your rotate tool, and your scale tool, um, and you can use it to model objects and position objects. Really, the only weird thing you might run into with uh, model mode is when you go to scale something, uh, and let's say you're trying to create an animation and you use your scale tool, it's not going to adjust the scale values in your attribute manager here, because instead, it's actually adjusting the size of it in your coordinate manager. So that doesn't really do us any good for animation. And so that's why we need to switch to object mode. Object mode kind of separates the geometry from um, the axis, according to the help file. Um, and so now when I use my scale tool, it changes the scale values in our attribute manager, which I can now keyframe and do whatever I need to do with that. So that is when you would want to use each of those model to model, object to animate, and then the animation mode is for when you want to use your move, rotate, and scale tools on an animated object. As it typically st stands with um, an animated object like this, if you wanted to move this whole object's animation or scale it, that's something that's pretty difficult and usually involves going keyframe by keyframe in order to adjust the movement. Not so with animation mode, as you just saw. Now we can move an object's animation without having to change the keyframe. Cinema 4D is going to offset and move all of the keyframes. You know, it's almost like we have um, this torus in a null and we're moving the null, not the torus, which is another way you could do this outside of animation mode. Um, but as you'll see, there, there are gonna be some other things as well we can do that honestly, I don't know if it would work in the same way in a null when it comes to the rotation or scale. So, you know, let's say I wanted this to kind of bounce off that. I can now say, all right, animation mode. I'm gonna want it to start here and then it's kind of bouncing off. And then if this one, obviously I wanted it to hit the ground, you know, you can still come in and adjust a key so that it's hitting on the ground as well. So that's kind of the gist of animation mode. A couple of things I wanna point out. You don't necessarily see it with move, but when you are rotating and scaling, right? Let's see what those do well it's going to scale our animation larger or smaller, either on an individual axis or on multiple axes. So I could very easily kind of make this animation smaller. And this might allow me to reuse an animation. Actually, I'm not sure if that's gonna be, yep, where I'm gonna want it to be. So, See, and that's where animation mode is kind of fighting me here because I can't select that keyframe. So I may go back to model mode where it may be easier for me to grab that key and move it. And if for whatever reason I can't because Cinema 4D isn't working with me, then actually what I would do is go into my timeline, find my Y position on that key right here and just adjust the key value. Although I don't think, nope. I was hoping it would update for me in my perspective view like that. There we go. But yes, so scale works that way as well. Now, um, with scale and rotate, oh, we still have to kind of fix that one. Um, man, it's not really letting me move the keyframes here. There we go. I had to get the object out of the way. Um, with rotate and scale, where the object is kind of becomes um, the anchor point uh, or wherever that rotation and scale happens from. So for instance, if I do a scale here, notice how, oops, let's go back to animation mode. Notice how that's where it scales from, okay? So where your object is, that's where the scale and rotation happens from. Same with move, but it isn't quite as big of a deal with the move. So um, there's scale, same thing with rotate, right? Maybe I want this 
animation to be rotated. Now notice it is doing some weird things to the handles there. Um, it kind of evens out once you get it to say 90 a little bit or whatever the equivalent of 90 is. I think this was already rotated a bit. Um, but yeah, it does do perhaps a little bit of weirdness on the handles at first until you get it to say 90 and then it kind of flattens out back to the way it was. Um, some of that does have to do with uh, the type of keyframes you have um, and if they have any handles and, and things like that. So keep that in mind. Um, now, if anybody's wondering how I was able to get the um, you know, handles in the viewport visible if you wanted to make adjustments on those. Um, I do have a separate video about it. It's kind of confusing and, and you know, makes it, Cinema 4D does not make it easy, but you almost have to, um, you know, select the keyframe in your timeline. And so that's like this one here and it's the Y position, select it and then check on and check off auto tangents. And, you know, sometimes it's easier than others. Sometimes things deselect. I've done a video about it before, so I won't get too much into it, but I'm sure that will be something that comes up. But yes, when it comes to rotating um, and scaling the track an animated property, um, you know, it does happen from where the object is. And that can be very useful as long as you are aware of it. And that's pretty much it, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. I will say, I think they did change this not too long ago to where you can now like move an object and, and do other things if you're in animation mode. It used to not be that way. Um, I'm glad they changed it, but it is something that, you know, once I'm done using it, you want to make sure you switch back to object, model, whatever it is, you know, um, you were in previously and, and want to go to go back to to continue using. But I think that's about it. So... That will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.